In this screencast, we're going to just describe different types of inhibition of enzyme reactions. And then in other screencasts, the rate expressions for these different types of reactions will be derived. So let's start. What we're looking at is an enzyme reacting with a substrate to make a complex. And then this complex can further react to recreate the enzyme. So since the enzyme is a catalyst and to make the product. So the net reaction is the substrate going to the product. So the rate of product formation. And so let's look at the rate of product formation. If there is no inhibition, then the michaelis menten expression is the substrate concentration so brackets indicate concentration a constant and again the substrate concentration we're in this v max the total amount of enzyme that we start with in the system is included so let's look at one type of inhibition and that's if the enzyme can react with an inhibitor so reversible reaction to make a complex. This complex will be inactive for making product, and this is how it inhibits the reaction. There's now less enzyme available for the reaction. So this is going to affect the rate of reaction as the substrate and the inhibitor both compete to react to form a complex with the enzyme. As a result, if we look at the rate of reaction, so this equation is derived elsewhere, and the main thing to point out is that as the inhibitor concentration increases, and because it's in the denominator, then the rate that we form product is going to decrease because essentially we have less enzyme to catalyze the reaction. The constant here is related to this equilibrium or in this case referred to as the dissociation constant for the inhibitor enzyme complex dissociating back into the enzyme and inhibitor the idea is if we have an inhibitor present then it's going to decrease the rate of the enzyme reaction to make product in this case we're looking at competitive inhibition Okay, so let's look at another type of inhibition. And that's if the complex after it forms can react with an inhibitor. Again, reversible reaction. And again, we're forming a complex. Now the complex has the substrate and the inhibitor both bound to the enzyme. Again, this complex is inactive for making product. This type of inhibition is referred to as uncompetitive. And that is, we're not directly competing for the enzyme, but instead for the complex. And so the rate expression for this, and I'll again write it down so we can compare it to the others. So notice of similar format, but different rate expression. And these are, are derived for example, by assuming the rate of product formation, the final step, this step is the rate determining step, and the other steps are in equilibrium. And again, that's shown in separate screencasts. So look at the third type of inhibition, which includes both of these things. So I'm going to erase some things to make it a little easier to see that. So the final type of inhibition that we're going to look at is referred to as non-competitive. And essentially, it says that the enzyme, of course, can react with the substrate, but it can also react with an inhibitor. Or the substrate enzyme complex can react with an inhibitor. Or the inhibitor enzyme complex can react with the substrate. So we're adding an additional reversible step. And now what we're saying is we have all of this together 
is non-competitive inhibition, also referred to as mixed inhibition. And then the rate expression for this, and so this rate expression, I'm not going to derive it here, but it's derived in other screencasts. And so this is non-competitive for mixed inhibition of enzyme reacting with the substrate. So we've looked at the different behaviors, and then, as you can see from the rate expression, they're going to show different behaviors as we change the inhibitor concentration or as we change the, the substrate concentration. And so then other screencasts will go through the details of these rate expression derivations.